Hello and welcome to another episode of Amoy Unplugged, Exploring Diversity, a show that focuses on the efforts and milestones geared towards the diversification of our nation's economy. I am Chioma Ikejani. Thank you for joining me. You've probably heard of it. A smart city to be situated within the Abuja city and built along the same lines as Dubai, Singapore, and Morocco? I'm talking about Centenary City Abuja. But what does this mean for Nigeria's economy? On the show today, to answer this question and more is the board chairman, General Abu Salam Abubakar retired, and the managing director, Dr. Aid Adenigwe. Don't go away, it's Amoy Unplugged, exploring diversity. So, you know, it's interesting. I'm going to take you back. Tell me a little bit about you. Where are you from? Um, the spirit of Nigeria has always lived in you, right? So tell me a little bit about, you know, yourself so that people that are watching can, can now say yes, you know, who... Well, I was born on a Saturday on the 13th of June, 1942, in a small community in a town called Mina in Niger State. At that time, under Gwari local native authority. And from there, my journey into life started. In 1950, I went to primary school in Mina. And Mina at that time was a small community where everybody knows who, who is who. And uh, my father was uh, fortunately one of the, let me say, influential people in the, in the town. And those days, you know, where everybody is everybody's keeper. I grew up to find out uh, a lot of children are staying in our house. So we became brothers and, and sisters because every community, everybody is his own ch child. In those days. In, in, those, in those days. Again, I found that uh, when there are some quarrels, you know, between people, he normally tried to settle, uh, to settle them. And I think that's where I imbibed this culture of peacemaking. The Centenary City was a project that was conceived during the Centenarian project. Why, why is it important um, from the chairman's perspective that Nigeria needs a city like this now? Okay, during the Centenary celebration, a group of people found it necessary or they came up with an idea to have a Centenary City where all about Nigeria will be deposited. The history of Nigeria will be deposited. And they think, which I agree with them, that it will become the unifying factor of Nigeria because everybody, every Nigerian will be represented here. Um, okay. So it became a sort of, again, a unifying factor for the country and if you are all united and live in harmony with each other, then there will be peace. And if there is peace, there is going to be progress. And I think certainly this will bring wealth to the nation. You know, I think that's so incredible at a time where maybe investors are jittery about coming to Nigeria and you still ha have an investor that believes in a project like this. Why do you think that um, an investor has been sticking to this vision for the longest time. Because uh, certainly, you know, Nigeria is a big country. There are a lot of opportunities for any investor to come into this country. We have a population of about 200 million. And Nigerians, by and large, are well-educated, yes. determined people, Give Nigerian a chance, he will succeed in whatever he puts his mind to. 
So certainly the market is there. And that's why the investors feel that uh, this is an opportunity and they took a gamble to come and invest here in Nigeria. Introducing Centenary City, a strategically located master planned development that will provide an enhanced lifestyle with a host of new leisure experiences for residents and visitors while respecting the deep history and rich culture of Nigeria. This modern interpretation of the traditional inner city community enables businesses to create new job opportunities and education to empower the future generation. Contributing to Abuja's global status as a modern capital city of the future. Welcome to Mamoy Unplugged, Exploring Diversity. You know, I have wanted to do this interview for a long time because just like I am with so many people that drive along the highway, I look up and I say, oh, Centenary City, it's still here. So first of all, what is Centenary City Abuja and what's that historical concept? Uh, thank you very much. Centenary City is a legacy project of the Centenary Celebrations. Uh, I know um, in 2014 um, was the 100 years of the amalgamation of Northern and Southern Nigeria into one country. So that's really the origin of one Nigeria. So uh, the Jonathan administration um, wanted to create a Centenary Celebration without government funding. So in a sense, it could be done by private sector support and all of that. Um, so throughout 2013 was the planning, throughout 2014 was the centenary celebrations with a lot of programs and all of that. So out of that came Centenary City, which is the legacy of that celebration. So when you look at Centenary City, what kind of a landmass is it sitting at? And in building the city from scratch, what are the numbers of inhabitants? Well, uh, to start from your first question, uh, Centenary City is an area of 1,262 hectares. However, the buildable land mass of Centenary City is really 690 hectares. Uh, we have boulders, we've left 105 hectares for Safari Park, that's green area. The entirety of Centenary City is 40% green area, which mm -hmm. is more than the, even the Abuja Master Plan. The Centenary City is also designed following the Abuja Master Plan, but it improved greatly on the Abuja Master Plan and was signed off by the FCDA before we submitted it to NEBSA, who is the supervising authority as a free zone authority. And that's the Nigerian Export, Nigerian Processing. Export Processing Zones Authority. Okay. So in terms of population, Centenary City is designed to accommodate about maybe 200,000 uh, residents. Okay. But more importantly, because it's based on diversifying the economy, it's based on tourism, it's based on shopping, it's based on sports, it's based on the safari park I said, we have an 18-hole golf course, we have a polo field. It's designed like to bring in visitors daily. Like Dubai. Exactly. So people come to shop, people come to play, people come to live. So it's really your work, play, you know, live, walk, and play kind of situation. But you expect to have more visitors coming in, over 100,000 daily wow. visitors coming, shopping, and doing things. They so you're constantly creating an economic value yes, chain. Yes, yes. And more importantly, like you said, in terms of Abuja, Centenary City is to complement Abuja City. The world just call it Abuja Centenary City. Mm. The word Abuja can never be taken missing. Taken out. Taken out, because we are part of the city. Now, Centenary City has been accorded a free zone status. What exactly does that mean in terms of the economy? Well, that's particularly important because once Centenary City started, um, it actually attracted uh, a very good investor from the U UAE that decided to build Centenary City for Nigeria with no cobo to the government. And the investor came with $18.376 billion to develop 100% Centenary City. And um, 
That's the most, that's the single highest private direct foreign investment or foreign direct investment in Nigeria's history. Wow. Now, it would have, if the enabling environment was sustained, created over 150,000 construction jobs, and if finished, created over 250,000 permanent well-paying jobs. And when I talk about 250,000 jobs, it's just jobs that is created. We're not talking about the auxiliary jobs that come from that. The drivers, the stewards, the cooks, the babysitters. Yes, that's the promise of Centenary City. So let me drill down to job creation yes. in terms of local content. Correct. Right? What's the percentage of local content that will be accorded to the indigenous Nigerians as opposed to, because sometimes we worry about foreigners coming in and taking the jobs that we Nigerians feel very capable of doing. Well, that's an interesting question, which I think even from the board and all of that has made sure that uh, Centenary City, from any way you look at it, must provide a huge capacity building for local Nigerians, and that's important. So. If you're a foreign com company working in Centenary City, you must have 30% uh, for local companies. We encourage companies here mm -hmm. to use subcontractors that are Nigerians. Our hope is that in the 10, 12, 15 year uh, it takes to fully build Centenary City, that we've grown some local companies that have become international because they're mixing with a lot of international. They've improved their procurement and they've improved their, their means of uh, doing business. So 30% is the minimum local content. All at work we intend to use in the Centenary City, be it furnishing the hotels, be it furnishing the centers we want to build here, must be sourced locally. One of the things about Centenary City is to showcase Nigeria's uh, culture, you know, tourism. Uh, of course, we have also proposed the tallest building in Africa that will house government archives of all the different uh, governments in Nigeria. Oh yeah, and I heard that um, there could be a Buhari Tower. Um, what, what is that? Like I said, it's a unity project. Um, the, the president was very active during the centenary celebration. So that's probably a good lasting legacy for, for the Buhari himself. Um, for all the efforts and support towards the Centenary celebrations. The design is ready. Um, we are, you know, working on the thing. You know, we'll be happy if the president comes to, uh, to cut the tip of it. But if, if we can finish all the arrangements, we intend to actually build a model uh, of what it looks like uh, to showcase. Yes, there's, there's plans for that. Okay, so let's look at um, infrastructure. Since you're building this from scratch, Correct. which is so incredible and exciting, what are some of those infrastructural amenities that somebody that's watching this should be really excited about? Well, we should be excited because, you know, one, we have an 18-hole golf course that will sit on 65 hectares. Good I mean, Lord. it's never anywhere you've seen in Nigeria. We also have a national park that's 45 hectares. So wow. families can come and relax and all yeah. of that. And then we have a cable car that takes you to everywhere. More importantly, you talk about a safari park. That is 105 hectares of you know, mountain ranges and all that. We said, it's a green area. We can do a safari park there. So we've actually had an MOU with the Nigerian Park Service. We've agreed on the animals. We can put them basically herbivores, not... Wow aggressive uh, carnivores <laughs> and you know, like giraffes, zebras, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the different monkeys. antelopes, yes, friendly giraffes. monkeys and things like that. So kids, and, you know, if you're a nature lover, you can hang out it's there. It's like the Ankari Game Reserve. And we have tents there. You can spend the weekend wow. just the surrounding and you have a car to drive through there. So it's fantastic. Okay. And last but not least is it's also designed to be Wi-Fi free because the digital space is going to be experimented here. You can pay your bills with your cell phone. You can pay your That's water with your cell phone. I mean, so it's, it, it's important that the entire city is wireless. I mean, it's Wi-Fi free. So 
If you're a resident, yes, you can ch charge you in the houses and all of that. But citywide, you can have Wi-Fi free for a certain amount of time to do your business. But what, one thing important it does also, it, it attracts the very intelligent youth because that's who you're building it for. Mm. Guy, let's go to Centurion City, let's go have a drink. I need to uh, do something. So you're, you're attracting the millennials, yeah. you're yeah. attracting the yeah. bubbly ones, yeah. the G generation. The generation. Yeah. I mean, we want to catch the kids with our amusement park, the we millennium. want to do our amusement park, we want to. So it's designed for everybody. Um, what do you plan to do with security in Centenary City? Um, the master plan all already has uh, plans for this, even before the challenges we're having. Uh, a, com a, a company called Global Risks out of London was hired to look at the security of the master plan, even before the current challenges. And they designed an elaborate uh, plan of how to secure the city. Um, because it's a free zone, it actually has controlled access in and out. Okay. Uh, because the customs are very diligent about what you bring in, what you take out, so that they don't miss um, their revenues. So there's really just four access points to the city. And the city will be walled around with uh, very tight security around it. And the city will have a central security station. They use the CCT cameras to view everything. And then the perimeter fencing also has sensors on it. Mm -hmm. If you breach it, it will show uh, in the security uh, stations. And then they have plans to use drones to check out what the issues are. So there's a triple level of security. There's a gate for trucks alone. If you're bringing goods to the city, those trucks will be x-rayed. Oh, yes, the x-ray machines. Yes, there are x-ray machines for trucks, for cars. There are bomb uh, x-rays on the back. So it's not, um, you know, there are technologies that check those things. And, you know, if we have to, then we'll have dog, uh, dog uh, bomb sniffing dogs and all of that. Those are all in the design. So I think once Centenary City starts, I think people will come here to be taking lessons on how you could secure some... a safe, smart city. Yeah. Um, lastly, you know, what is available for someone that wants to be involved in Centenary City? What well, else? What, what is left? For investors, there's, uh, we can collaborate with investors that want to take land and develop specifically to the master plan. Okay. Their hotels, their residential areas, okay, there are malls, oh yes, there's a lot of things here, there's the, there's the golf course, there's the okay. polo, those are all open for collaboration with outside parties that are interested. Um, in terms of, we're, we've just, we're just completing a 236 unit uh, terrace housing within the Centenary City, yes. Is that within the first phase? How That's many phases? The, is it three phases? And what is the first, second, and third phase? We have three phases. Uh, phase one is uh, the polo, the golf course, and part of this uh, residential we're doing. Okay. Uh, the second phase is the downtown area, the, 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 the train of the river channel and the, the infrastructures of that. And then we've left the golf course area and all that for the third phase. However, if you have serious investors that want to start from point A to point B or point C, um, we can look at that too. Phase one is just phase one, about 18 hectares and stuff like that. Phase two has three phases, phase two A, phase two B, phase wow. two C, and then phase three is the golf course in the back uh, with all the residentials around it and also. Why is it in phases? You can't quickly come here, it's a, it's a huge project. Also, people ask us, ah, why is Centenary City taking time? Why? Yeah, hey, why is it taking we're time? We're not building an estate. That's true. We're building a city. And That's if you true. look at how big the city is, it's a combination of Asogo and Maitama together. Yeah. So it's that big. You need to be careful. You need to take your time. Also, you need to make changes to what's happening. If, you know, we're, you know like you said, oh, security. Now you look at that more, yeah. you improve yeah. it now. Yeah, and then... Uh, challenges here, you improve it now. You don't have to wait. So we're being futuristic in anticipating issues that will come and we're planning for it today. Okay. Thank you. This Thank you so much. so interesting. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to see what I can do to get involved. Please. <laughs> <laughs>
Introducing Centenary City, a strategically located master planned development that will provide an enhanced lifestyle with a host of new leisure experiences for residents and visitors while respecting the deep history and rich culture of Nigeria. This modern interpretation of the traditional inner city community enables businesses to create new job opportunities and education to empower the future generation. Contributing to Abuja's global status as a modern capital city of the future. You have been a founding chairman and if there is any government official that is watching this interview and they've heard about Centenary City but they really don't really understand. Every time they drive to the airport they see that it's still there. As the chairman, what message do you want to share with government officials, Nigerians, um, about Centenary City and why you think that it's probably one of Nigeria's landmark projects that, that is coming up very soon. All right. My first message is to the officials, government officials. They should find time to come and visit this office to see the plans we have so that they can understand I have the, and thank the people who have the vision of setting up the centenary cities okay. so that it can get government back in. It is not a government project. It is a private uh, project that, like I say, will bring employment and will bring opportunities to develop our economy in, in this country. Now we are crying we don't have money yeah. and so on and so forth. I'm absolutely sure if by the time this centenary uh, city is completed, it will be a gold mine for Nigerians. It will be a gold mine because if it comes to be, a lot of tourists will mm. come, look at, see how Dubai has come out from the desert. And the free zone. Yeah, that's right. So these are my uh, message to the government official. Let them come and see what is being done. And again, to see how they can support the centenary city in whatever it is doing. For the Nigerians also, Yes, this is an opportunity for you to come and see what is being done, to see how you can be part and parcel of this centenary city. Be, be you be a trader, a welder, a businessman, and so on. There are a lot of shops to be set up, like the Dubai Mall, where we, we, we see that Dubai has just come out of the desert and it has become the center of the, of the world, so In to speak. In only 50 years. Yeah, that's right. And again, I can see this centenary city being the center of Africa. Because definitely from the vision I, I see here, it's a great job. It's a great job, a great good opportunity. And people should come and support this private initiative so that the coming generation will benefit uh, from this because it is a continuous project. And I'm hoping this being the first centenary city, other cities in the country will come mm. in, into being, being a replica of this. Need I say more? I'm sure you've enjoyed that conversation. Till I come your way again, let's continue the chat on my social media platforms. I am Chioma Ikejani. Stay safe and goodbye.